Today I'm doing a green eye and I'm using my one and only Pat McGrath palette. She has several that I really like, but after I bought this one and realized it's really totally unusable for me, I didn't get any more. But it is this green color that is so insanely beautiful. I had to have it. I've never seen anything quite like it. At some point I actually kind of forced myself to use this. I would put it out and like use this. But honestly, the colors are just too dark. The, you know, quote unquote normal colors, these six, too dark for me, and these are too special for me, and they're beautiful, beautiful powders. They're really, really well done, but it's a difficult palette. I'm going to move this so you can watch that green as I move this, and you might be able to see that there is a dark purple shift, and I'm just going to move it around a little bit. Hopefully you can see. Now that dark purple shift makes it actually challenging for hooded eyes because it can bring darkness where you don't want any darkness. But the look I'm going to do is very, very, very easy and very simple. And then I'll show you a couple of ways to bring it up a notch if you want to. So if you want to see a green eye, look for the holiday, keep watching. I'm the Hooded Lid and welcome to my channel. Let's just get right into it and I'll do all my talking while I'm applying. I've got my mirror. I'm moving you in. I'm taking a Wayne Goss 18, which is very, very similar to a 217. It's basically a pinch ferrule fluffy brush. Going into the green and applying it to my lid. I have a little bit of foundation and I've already powdered that down. It's creased a little bit, so I'll just hang that out. And I'm just kind of, as usual, or as I've been doing lately, just feeling out the orbital bone. and let that be my guide. I'm not going to bring it out quite yet, but there's the purple. For me, I am going to bring this out pretty big like I usually do, like straight out here. But if you wanted something a little more subtle, or if your hood is a little more different, or if your hood is different than mine, you could just bring it out a little bit. I'm not applying any more. I'm just going to bounce this around. And that way I might not have to do any blending because these are so these are so amazing. When I first saw this at Sephora, you know, you, you can get, you can go over to the brush section and get yourself like a fluffy brush to put on some powder. Um, but you can't really get anything to do eyeshadow. They have those foam things, but they're pretty bad. So I took my finger and put the shadow all over my eye and it blended itself. It was nuts. And then I thought, well, let's use this chocolate brown as my transition. And that went on with my finger. They're amazing. They're not, they don't feel buttery or creamy, but I've never had anything ever that's blended as nicely as these shadows have. I just wish that she made palettes that were a little more approachable. Because she certainly can. The mattes are so beautiful in their texture and in their application. Why not? Just make some that are more wearable. And forest from the trees. I think I need to go up a little bit here. No, probably not. Now again, because there is that purple in here, if you... how do I explain it? I don't necessarily feel that I have to do a transition because I didn't add when I went out here and it, it kind of creates its own transition, if that makes sense. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to haze with what I have. I know it's weird, you guys. I have an 8X, a 13X, and a regular. I think that's going to do it. Next slide. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this. See how there's this little triangle right here? 
that pulls everything down and I have it on this side a little bit too. And I'm just going to use a Muji or a Q-tip. Actually I think I'm going to do a Q-tip instead of a Muji and the best makeup remover ever. Then I lift up the eye Now I have something really sharp, which I don't want, so I'm just going to take my fingers and press down and see if I can kind of make that a little softer without moving it around too much. And then whatever is left from doing my under eyes earlier, I'm going to take to this area. But you want to be careful that you don't have a lot of powder there, so I first hit it with the finger to take off anything, because you don't want... You don't want the concealer to mix with this color and suddenly you have green concealer going all over your face. So I hit it pretty lightly. And because I am crepey and wrinkly, I don't just go one direction because I want to fill that stuff in. Go both directions. And even if you can do a crosshatch. And the other side. I just did my eyebrows and I checked in another mirror and I do think I'm pretty even, as even as I'm going to be. I still haven't decided if I'm going to do anything in the transition here. I want to do my tight line. This is the Pat McGrath Brown Blitz or Blitz Brown. It's a chocolate brown with a little bit of gold uh, shimmer in it and I just think it's less hard than a black. You could do black if you wanted to, but I do have a lot of darkness going on here. It's actually, to me, it feels darker than the gray look because that gray look was a little transparent. It was soft. This one is punchy. I do want to do a little something under my eyes. Now I want to keep everything pretty light under the eyes because this is a very dark shadow and it has that purple undertone and of course darkness under the eyes tends to be purple and I don't want to have it relate to each other and call it out. So a clean under eye is something I really really like. I think it's very nice looking but a little something, a little something dreamy under the eye is also okay. Now, I mean, this gold is amazing. There's a lot here to love about it, but I know that it will cross the line into gaudiness. And if you are in your 20s, have a little fun with it. 30s, have a little fun with it. 40s, think about toning it down. 50s, same thing as 40s. So, I want a little something special. I'm gonna go with this, and let me show you what that looks like. It looks gold in some angles. But there is a stunning, oh, so stunning reflex in that. Beautiful. And it's not going to add any darkness to the area, but it will add some interest. Kind of a dreamy thing. I'm going to take a pencil brush and really carefully lay this down. I want to be pretty specific, especially since fallout for this kind of product, high probability. And I don't really want it if I can avoid it. Sometimes I don't mind, you know, a couple of sparkles on the cheek. I don't mind it. But for this, I don't want it. So this is something no one is going to see from across the room unless the light just hits it perfectly. But it's just a little something something and I'm turning my head to see if you can see any kind of reflection at all there. And going to the other one. Fallout-wise, I would say pretty close to zero. That's not a problem with these palettes. And then one final touch that you may want to do. If you have a gold eyeliner, that might be something pretty fun, but I would make it incredibly thin. I'm going to go in with a green eyeliner. This color is very similar to the color on the lid. And some might ask, why bother? When you're hooded, you have a lot of flesh kind of hitting each other, and it rubs off your powder. In fact, a lot of things don't even stay for three minutes on me because there's so much rub off, especially on this eye. This is so close in color. I hope this will focus. But there are little gold sparkles in here. And really, you can wear this on the daily. If you make it thin enough, it'll just bring a little brilliance to your eyes. 
So it's very similar, but it's not going anywhere. When this dries down, it is not coming off. I washed my dishes yesterday and I had a swatch on. Didn't come off. Didn't come off until I put some micellar water on it. So I start with a liquid. I kind of start a little bit on the other side of the middle way because there's a lot of product. And then once most of that product is off, I go to the inner. It's really imperceivable, but it's I know it's there. If you are hooded in the center and not on the end, you could do a little flick with this mascara, and I'll be right back. I hear somebody's gardener firing up their blower, so um, mascara only. I don't think false eyelashes are the way to go with this. The statement is the green, that's the star, and everything else should be impeccable, but not fighting with it. And there goes my dog, because it's my neighbor's gardener, and he usually gives her a treat. Lips I want to keep really neutral. I did a nude with my smoky gray, and I did a red with my smoky red. This falls in between. I really like this look. I really feel like I'm getting a bit of a cat on this, on this eye more than this eye. Again, because this does have a shift to it, it's hard to tell if I am perfectly even, but I'm even enough. And that is going to be my green sparkly look. I'm going to pull you out so you can get an idea of the whole look with my sparkle sweater because, you know. So something like this, you could absolutely keep your hair up. It would kind of juxtapose and actually bring focus to the green. Or a little down. I wouldn't go crazy. And there you go. I think the look is simple and yet impactful. And I think with these kind of shadows, you need to go for simple if you're of a certain age. If you, too, have a Pat McGrath that you never use, this is the time of year to pull it out and start playing with it and get some use out of it. I want to thank you for spending some time with me. I hope that you found it a little helpful, maybe it inspired you, and I hope you come back again. In the meantime, I'm wishing you a fantastic day.